We got two Cell Builder. And then we got three Mating Yard. We'll write new. Okay, so this is what we've already shown here. We've done one, two, three. We didn't do this, but they're here and we talked about them. Right. So for grafting, I need to have a first or second instar larva. To get that, I have to either hunt and peck for my larva or I need to restrict the queen. If I restrict the queen, then I need to restrict her four days before I graft. So you can either do this by modifying a colony so she only has one frame of brood to lay on or All one right. frame of open, clean, dark comb to lay on. Or you physically restrict her with the modified cage and I'll show you that before I, I go there in my truck. I left a couple here yesterday. I remember just one easy thing. So if I'm gonna restrict them on, if I need to graft on Saturday, mm -hmm. then I restrict her on Wednesday. So she lays here. That way you know how old they are? Yep, Thursday, Friday. So if she lays on Wednesday, then it's egg, egg, egg. At some point she'll hatch, Saturday I can graft. If your comb's not perfectly clean or she delays her laying, you can restrict her on Wednesday and you'll still have eggs on Saturday. It's perfectly, perfectly fine to do Tuesday for the Saturday. You're going to have some older larvae, you're going to have some younger ones, and then you can just decide between which ones you want to use. Okay. So just kind of keep that in mind as you're watching this video. So this is all you need for grafting day, and then you just need your cups and your tool. All right. Okay. Your cell builder over here. Queenless. And then people like Mike Palmer put up hopelessly queenless, which means they have no larvae and usually no eggs. They can't do anything with the eggs anyways at this point. If you have some larvae, let's say on a pollen frame, I usually rub um, pollen substitute right into those cells. It desiccates and kills them, and then they can always use the pollen sub. That's a good point. So this is essentially what it does not have, okay? What it does have is a pollen frame, nectar frame, over supply of healthy young bees. That's the key. They can't be older bees. They can't be nutritionally stressed bees. They can't be unhealthy bees. They have to just be an oversupply of, of um, surplus young bees. So find some and shake them. Yeah, so like I've done experiments and I'll shake like nine pounds of bees into an easy box and then graft into it works out really well. So I'll tell you my cell building method, it's lazy, and then you can just look up some others. So the easy nuke box, you know, just this that little ventilated box. I have mm -hmm. medium, so I really like it because I have a lot of space down here so they don't get super hot. But right in here, the center frame, um, I'll put a larval frame to set it up. And then I have my pollen frame, my nectar frame, and then two either nectar or empty frames on the outside. And then I add in thousands of bees by shaking them. So it's essentially the southern swarm box. I then move them to a new yard um, so they don't fly back to their own colonies. Okay. I graft. I then remove that larval frame and put the graft in its place. The larval oh. frame was only there to hold all these bees and get them to act more colony-like. Ah. Oh. That's it. I keep them in here for the whole 10 days. I'm lazy. That sounds easy. Super easy. <laughs> they're, now, they're, whenever something's easy... There's a cost. There's a drawback. Let's say you have another colony over here, a cell builder you used weeks before, and you forgot about it. And that queen's flying back, and she decides to go into this one. You just lost all your cells. Okay? Rarely happens, but when it does, the cost is really big. So for learning, I love describing this, because it's super easy, and you're going to get success. Could you do, like, a queen reducer on the entrance? You could. You totally could come up with something like that. You could put queen excluder there or something. Absolutely. They're also pretty easy to feed. You can invert a nuke box on top of this. Open up a lid, put a nuke box, put the nuke cover, and put your feed cans right in there. Totally works. Oh, yeah. Yep. Um, half gallon. We've got some nuke boxes that have... Uh, to, to a we did, like, nuke, uh, yep. nuke supers. Yep. Um, which is... It was a really dumb idea. It didn't work very well, but okay. it's good for feeding if you're turning something... You, you can turn all your nuke supers right now into your cell builders. Totally. Oh my okay. Gosh. You good. Thank heavens yep. because we got so many. You know, and, and if you're worried about ventilation, 
cut or drill a hole, take some number eight screen and staple it to it. That's, that's what yeah. I did on all keep, my notes. Please keep this as simple as, as yeah. possible. So I'm going to describe that to you because it's super, super easy. And at the end, you just either put a queen into it or leave a cell in it and you have a whole new colony. Right. Could this dry out while you're describing that? No, you'll be okay. Okay. And Pro I didn't know you speak Chinese. <laughs> no, okay. Is that is that Chinese? What you just said, like, for the last two minutes. Oh. So... So grafting day is day one for this. So one, okay? You can check at 24 or 48 hours and you won't hurt the cells, okay? Oh, we still got to check those ones from yesterday. Too. Yep, and, we'll, and we're gonna do that because Ian needs to see him, he needs to put his cells in. And what you should see is here's your base cup, or here's your insert cup. Mm -hmm. So you should see some jelly right here and you should see a wax rim starting to be drawn, okay? All right. So I should see a layer of jelly. Yep. Wax yeah. rim, or at least them starting to work on a wax rim. Yep, wax. It'll be drawn down. Wax, and this is jelly. Okay, so that's normal. At approximately four days, four into five, they get capped. So at this point, they're no longer being fed by the cell builder. They're still delicate. You can handle them, but they're still delicate. Day, like six to eight, very delicate. Okay, day 10, ripe. This is where you put them into your mating nukes. Your mating nukes can be little minis. So we're just gonna put a tucka here. They can look like a tucka mating nuke, okay? And that could be real frames that are cut down. They could be tucka frames, sand frames, sand frames whatever. You can also do just a nuke box. So you can make up anywhere from a three to, to a five frame nuke and use that in your mating yard. So my, okay. my mating yard is a bunch of four frame nukes. You can use five frames, I use those two. And in which case, two frames of brood, one frame honey, one pollen mix, one empty. Keep it easy. And you're never gonna find, nice. perfect, you're never gonna find perfect frames. So sometimes you'll have half pollen, half larva, half pollen, half larva, put them together, that's one brood frame. Right. And just keep the brood together. Can you use those five frames? Sorry to interrupt. Uh -huh. I'm just kind of watching over your shoulder. Yep. So you, you, that's a five frame nuke you got right there that you're looking at. So mm -hmm. you got you got five frames so you're so you're not dividing that in two and having two queens, right? Nope, nope. This is this is just one mating nuke, one unit. Okay. Absolutely. And so, so you're not splitting them. Are you splitting them like she's doing them? Eventually they'll get too strong and you'll have to. But deal with no, that. No, you know what I'm saying. Splitting it into four and four. Four on either side with the metal divider. Uh, I just use standalone boxes. Nope, so no divider. Okay. In my climate, I don't need it, and it's easier on my back. Where are you from? So that's what I do. I'm in Maryland. Oh okay, God. so, so you're, you're saying when we do the mating note, instead of dividing out with this, do like a, a five frame. Yeah, just normal yeah, five frame box. Thing. Okay. Yeah, you can totally do this. Do this. Okay. You can totally do this. Do this. Mm -hmm. So if I do it the, with We're the, the tuck away, mm -hmm. I'll be splitting them though, right? Yeah, but she also yeah. has someone that she doesn't split. Yeah, there's some. Oh, yeah. yeah so I what they're doing, what they're doing is they're capitalizing on the construction of a box. If mm -hmm. you don't need to capitalize on the construction of a box, don't worry about Just it. Just use a whole box. Yep. Okay. Totally. That's what I was getting at. Um, if the stronger you make these, the more likely they're to reject a queen cell. So that's just one thing. You can make hmm. them too too strong. Wow. So I know that. day one. This is day ten. Now they're in here. Plus either sixteen days or twenty one. And the reason I say that is they're both easy to remember. This is like the earliest you'll go and catch them. Because you have the risk of them mating but not laying yet, if you do it before this. 21, they're definitely gonna be mated or they're just not having come back, in which case you can catch, okay? How often can I check? You can check as long as you want, but you're just gonna get frustrated and you're not gonna help anything. So. we will get tired of it. Yeah, just wait. If you have healthy looking good cells, just wait. You, you, gotta, okay. you gotta be patient. Christmas morning will come. If you're gonna catch your queens, yeah. On day 21, 10 days prior, you start this again. And that way, when you catch on this day, they're available that day or the next. Okay. And that's how you keep the whole cycle going. So on day 11, I can go ahead and graft again. Exactly. Of the first graft. Exactly. Start a new grafting cycle. Yep. Okay. Sweet. Awesome. And then you're on a queen grafting schedule.